and welcome to another edition of the Interstellar Modeler. Um, in this video I'd like to feature the Viper Mark 7 from Mobius Models. Um, this model is a replica of the fighter ship we saw in the reimagined version of the series and it measures about 12 inches in length and um, I think it's pretty nicely detailed. And I wanted this model to look like it had been through a few fights so I really really wanted it to look weathered. And uh, so I did some research online and then came across a version that really inspired me. Um, and that's what uh, I've based this model on. Uh, the weathering of that model not only included the usual dark windblown streaks, but um, had chip surface paint revealing an undercoat. Uh, so that's what I was going for here. Um, in order to achieve this, I used a hairspray salt technique, which uh, utilizes hairspray that is painted over an enamel base coat. Uh, you allow that to dry, and then uh, you apply an acrylic surface coat and the hairspray allows you to chip away at that surface coat um, once, uh, once that uh, coat is dry. Uh, the instructions uh, suggest using a paint called Ford Engine Blue which is available in enamel only but since this technique requires an acrylic top coat I had to try to duplicate that color as best I could so I used a 60% light ghost gray, 20% dark sea blue, 10% dark ghost gray, and 10% interior green and these percentages, of course, are approximate, so you can tailor the mix as you see fit. So let's go over to the workbench, and I'll show you how this technique works. Okay, so let me demonstrate the hairspray technique, which I will use to weather the surface of this plastic piece. Um, this is, of course, a piece from Noble Enterprise kit, and what I've done is I've sprayed this section here with a um, flat black uh, color, and uh, on this side is a silverish uh, color. And what we're going to do next is I am going to um, airbrush some hairspray onto the surface. And in certain sections, I'm going to sprinkle some salt. What we're going to do after that is we're going to just let it dry. And once it dries, we're going to apply the top coat. And then we're going to let that dry. And then once that dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, apply some water to the surface, which will start to dissolve the salt and we will take a brush and I will show you how to expose uh, the undercoat here um, so that it will look weathered and beaten. So um, let's go ahead and start with that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply some hairspray here. Okay, like so. And we're just gonna take some table salt and we're just gonna sprinkle it in this section right here and maybe in this section right here. All right. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do for now. And what I'm gonna do is just allow this to dry and then I will apply the surface uh, coat. Okay, so what we have here now is the piece that's been painted with a gray color. I figured it wouldn't be too exciting to watch me paint something with, uh, with this gray paint here. So I went ahead and did it after it dried. And as you can see, the surface is covered with the salt here. So what we're gonna do is now apply some water with a brush and slowly chip away at some of these areas so that we can reveal the undercoat. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna, you don't, um, you want to use your best brush with this by, uh, with this technique, by the way. You just want to use an old brush here so you don't ruin the tip um, too badly. So um, uh, what I'm going to do now is just apply the water. And as you can see, it is slowly dissolving the salt. And uh, what we'll get is a stippled type appearance. And then you can see how the paint is just rubbing off, like so, revealing the black undercoat. Okay, you can see that. And we'll do it on the silver side here too, because this is how I did it on the Viper. And whether you use salt or not really depends on the look you're after. Uh, the salt will give you this sort of stippled appearance like this, so it looks spotted. Okay. All right. I'm just going to grab a 
the towel and dry this off. Okay, and you can hopefully see now you have a pretty rough um, beaten surface here, um, exposing some of the undercoat. And um, you don't have to use a salt if you don't want to have this stippled appearance like on some sections of the Viper. I just wanted it to look streaked. Um, so you can just, you know, just work at it like so. And so say the ship got hit with something at a high velocity and maybe it hit the side of the hull. You can kind of give it a streaked appearance like that or so. I mean, this is kind of a... Um, I don't know if it's going to look right, right? But you can kind of get the one going after here. Okay. And um, this particular technique works great if you're trying to make a door look rusty. Um, you know, I've seen the technique um, used on World War II tank models and so forth, but um, um, this was the look I was after when I did the Viper, and I thought it looked um, it looked pretty good. Now, the type of hairspray to use, you can actually get any type of hairspray, really. I just bought the least expensive one. I went to a local drugstore uh, called CVS, and uh, they just had this stuff here. And all I did was I took this and um, sprayed it directly into a um, into the bottle that we used um, uh, this one right here, and just uh, get enough in there so that you can then um, hook up the bottle to your airbrush. And applying with an airbrush, of course, is going to give you more control over the amount of um, hairspray that you use. Now, when I sprayed it, I, I sprayed a ton on there, but um, you uh, probably don't even need to use that much. Um, but nonetheless, as you can see, um, the final effect um, I think looks pretty good. All right, so that's the hairspray salt technique for weathering the surface of a model. So again, the detailing that you see here um, is a combination of using the salt technique. I actually tried that first here um, towards um, the rear part of these um, manifolds and uh, you can see that's why it looks a little bit more spotted and then other places I just kind of brushed and chipped away at the paint to give it a um, a worn weathered look and um, in combination with this technique uh, the dark spots that you see all around here were done with pastels so pastels um, is a pretty nice way of detailing or adding some dark weathering to your ship um, and I will demonstrate that technique that I use anyway uh, in another video but uh, you can see it gives it that windswept look um, you know if the ship's flying through explosions or through an atmosphere and it's getting all dirtied up um, that's really what I wanted to show um, here okay and this is a look at the underside of the ship and as you can see I used the weathering technique here as well and applied more pastels to um, show some laser hits here and some of that windswept look here along the um, areas where the landing pads come out of and certainly back here where the exhaust uh, ports are and speaking of these exhaust areas here I um, did find this particular part challenging here to um, hook up um, these uh, thin pieces along the outside here so just be careful when you do that but um, overall it wasn't too bad uh, the other thing that I did too is I drilled out uh, some of these um, areas here just to give it a bit more depth um, rather than just painting them black okay, let me show you the cockpit area here and um, what really helped make this look a bit better was the decal sheet that I got from Starship Modeler. Um, this adds a lot of nice detail um, to the instrument panel. Um, it looks a lot more accurate and um, really gives it a nice look. The uh, ship can certainly be lighted. I've seen a number of excellent um, examples online of uh, Mark 7 Vipers that were lit up and they look really, really nice, but um, 
Um, I'm just not an expert at lighting models, and I decided not to uh, not to try that with this one. Um, but I did leave the cockpit um, canopy uh, loose so that I can pull it off and um, and expose the interior. And there you go. So hopefully that gave you some hints on how to uh, detail a ship like this. Uh, maybe you can use those techniques on other models that you have as well. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line, and I'll see you next time.